Hello. In the past, I've done a few videos already of my extracting uh, video 8 tapes from 8mm camcorders that have died. Uh, and the intention is to get the tape out of the camcorder with little to no damage to tape or camcorder, and then I can digitize the tape for the customer. And I've featured some Sony and Sanyo camcorders in the past. Today, we have a, another Sony, a different model to the ones I've worked on in the past. This one looks like it's been partly ejected by brute force or by itself, we just don't know. And this one's a Canon UXC10, and I've not worked on a Canon one before. So let's start with the Sony, see if we can get the tape out initially just by powering up the camcorder. And if that doesn't work, then I'll have to take it apart and drive the loading motor, which may be easy or it may be difficult, depending where it's mounted. So this one is in the fairly much unlaced position, but the tape has not uh, lifted out, so it may not be fully unlaced. Uh, okay, let's power it up initially. So this says DC 6 volts. Uh, we're going to apply 6 volts then, or maybe just a hint over, as though it's got a generous battery to these terminals, which would normally connect to the uh, battery. Watch the polarity. Fortunately, the arm mark says minus plus. So you can see I've set my supply here to what 6.1 volts and it's going to go for about 1.7 amps there so that's pretty generous. We're getting 80 milliamp current draw, a flashing display which you may not be able to see there which tells us that the machine is at least partly live but I'm sure eject won't do anything so it's in a state of being jammed anyway even with it in the off position it shouldn't just sit there with a, a tape in that condition so clearly the machine has uh, got a problem okay so this has clearly died uh, we're therefore going to switch off the power and we're going to have to take at least some of this apart now as I said my intention is to do little or no damage uh, but of course the camcorder itself is never going to work again because it would require a huge amount of repair work uh, which is just not practical. Now exactly how you take each given model of camcorder apart varies significantly but uh, in general you have to take quite a lot off and very often you have to take the front of the camcorder off in order to get the cabinet side off but let's just see how this one goes so I've not worked on this particular model before which is a CCD TR705E It's so often the case you have to take the front off Sony camcorders in order to take the side cabinet work off. Right, that allows us to get the main cabinet work off. And now we can look for the loading motor. And I think we're in luck on this one. The loading motor is accessible. It's there. So uh, hopefully we can operate the mechanism. It might be the mechanism still jammed and even with the motor we're not going to get anywhere. But uh, we can but try. I'm going to take my power supply down to about 5 volts. I've also lowered the current limit slightly. Now, it's not ideal putting power on here when it's still connected to the board. And if I could unplug it from the board, I would. But that would involve a major strip down. And anyway, the circuit will be designed so that if the motor overruns that it, the board can handle the fact that the motor will generate energy. So it will be designed to tolerate a certain amount of back EMF from the motor. So applying a voltage to it shouldn't matter too much. Uh, getting to the one of the terminals is going to be tricky. The red one's easy, the black one's hard. Okay, so armed with 5 volts, or 4.7 volts, something like that, on these terminals. Uh, let's see which way around these might be. I'm going to start with red and black on red and black. 
and see if the mechanism does anything. Right, that's lacing. Okay, we want to go the other way. So, reverse those. And we have the tape out. We will have a bit of tape slack because it won't have necessarily wound all the tape in, but it's not too much. We can easily fix that. Okay. Now, what's nice to do is if we can close this, it may not latch down. If we can close that and then lace it up, it just leaves the machine in a better condition. This looks a little bit tidier. So pushing this down, I'll now see if we can lace it back up. Uh, can I get it fully laced? It's a bit awkward because of the position of the, the, the connectors, but I'll try to fully lace it just so I can give it back to the customer in a tidy condition. Okay. So that's now fully laced and we can reassemble it. Okay, that's uh, fully reassembled. Uh, the customer can take it back, so they have their camcorder back. You know, for sentimental reasons, it's still their camcorder, and we don't have any screws missing or in the wrong places. Good, and we can digitize that tape shortly. Let's now work on the Canon. Right, this one did come with its mains adapters, but again, they may not work properly. That might be part of the problem. So, assuming nothing, we'll start by applying uh, 6.1 volts to the battery terminals here. When I first switched it on it took about 300 milliamps and then went to zero on here. So what's our status? Nothing happening, it's quite sticky plastic. Let's hit eject. Nothing. This is in off. Oh, making a noise. Did you hear that? And switches to play. It's clicking. Uh, it might be taking more current than we can give it. Let's put up our current limit. Okay, clicking noise, and my two amp power supply is. Well, I don't, it's not hitting the current limit. So I think we're going up to look better than amp. It's not the power supply that's tripping out, it's something here. It's stopped now. Try eject one more time. This makes a clicking noise. And nothing on the display. So, okay, it's going to take the same treatment, I suspect. Let's disconnect that. Okay, now I'll set that power supply to about 5 volts. So, we've got the same treatment now. Whether this comes apart in the same way, I don't know. The layout is somewhat different because on these, the battery is on the side rather than the, the back. How much of this we can take off without taking this off, I don't let know. This is very sticky and horrible. The plastic is clearly degrading. Now I don't know precisely which screws I need to take out, so I'm having to guess a little bit. What's nice on the Sony ones, they have little arrows pointing to those screws that need to be taken out in order to take cabinet work off, but um, Canon didn't do that. We do have to take the cassette door off, that's easy enough.
Okay, I have partial access. I think I'd have to take the deck out to fully release this cabinet work. Uh, one of the more difficult machines I've ever had to work on. But fortunately, we do have access to the loading motor. Because that was a horrible thing to work on. Absolutely unpleasant. Right, so we'll do the same trick. We'll uh, run the motor. We don't know which way to turn it at the moment. But at least we've got fairly good access to this one. We don't have to use a microscope. So we'll... Take a guess, shall we, at the polarity. If nothing happens, it's going the wrong way. I think that's fully laced. OK, let's go the other way. that stop what happened didn't quite complete try again so that's lacing I'll slightly increase the voltage 5 and a bit volts It's jamming. It might be jamming on the cabinet, though. Oh, I think it was on. I think it was ejected at that point, and I just accidentally closed it. Silly me. Yes, it's just jamming up on the cabinet work I haven't removed properly. I should be able to get the tape out now. There we go. And again, a bit of tape slack to deal with. OK, I can put that back into the fully laced position again now. Okay, and now try to reassemble as best I can all this really awkward cabinet work on this cannon. I hope I never have to work on this model again. It's really been quite a tricky one. Not helped by the fact it's so sticky, the plastic is just dying. OK, that one's also back in one piece. That was a horrible thing to take apart and put back together. I clearly wasn't doing it in quite the right way. But as far as I'm aware, the only thing that went wrong in the end was this little bit of rubberized plastic broke because this rubber is just disintegrating to a horrible sticky goo. Right, so we have the tape out of that one and we can run that too. Well, I hope you've enjoyed us working on these two cameras. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. Customers decided that they don't want this Canon camcorder back, so let's have a little bit more of a play with it. So using its original power supply, 
uh, I think we'll see if we can plug it in and what life we get. And I've got gash tape here, I could pop this in if it will take a tape now, because of course it's done the eject sequence, so there's always a possibility that it might work now. Okay, well, so we have some life from the uh, viewfinder, it's full of grot, but wouldn't it be fun if we could get this thing going again, albeit it's horribly sticky. Uh, so let's try eject, it's in the play mode here, let's try eject, hmm, it's looking quite promising. Head spins okay, the pinch roll is in place. Well, it's worth trying, isn't it? Slightly noisy. Ugh. Making some odd noises. It seems to have gone in. Oh, it's flashing eject. So it's had some sort of error. I'll power cycle it, maybe, if we're really lucky, that eject might go away. Depends what the problem is it's detected. It's in stop mode. Oh well, it's worth trying to hit play then, isn't it? Now it's gone straight into eject again. Can I eject it? Uh. Can we eject it? Oh, I might have a tape stuck in it now. <laughs> Regretting life choices. Power cycle and just keep hitting eject. Maybe I'll power cycle it a few times and keep hitting eject and see what happens. Oh, well, I may have a tape stuck in it now. Just realized this got optical image stabilizer, so that was quite a high-end feature in its day. After an awful lot of perseverance, it did actually eject the tape, but uh, I will be putting another tape in that one. Okay, well we got the tape out, it doesn't really matter anyway because the tape is gash and so is the camcorder, but uh, it was a bit of fun just seeing if there was any hope of it ever working again.